So I've got something a bit different today. It's a Jeff Rank card. It's a DA12-NS. This is a control card out of a piece of machinery. And this is a digital to analog card. That's why it's called DA. It's got digital signal on this side, analog outputs on this side. And this has got some issues. I've already done some work on it, recorded a video for that, but I thought I'd just record this bit after the fact to actually explain what the card is and what it does and what its basic construction is. I thought it might be good information to include in the video. So left hand side here we've got these little filters, little inductors, just to filter in the output. We've got some capacitors here as well on the outputs. There's 18 pins. So you've got the filters first. Then right next to these you've got some little transistors. See them S's, marked as S all the way down here. This has got 12 outputs, so this has got 12 devices. You've got six here, six down here, you can see no one just up there. All right. So those are the actual transistors which drive the outputs. Then we've got some selection switches down here and over here. These relate to all these resistors and stuff on the back. Resistors and capacitors. We're switching those to adjust the filter characteristics and the outputs characteristics for the feedback. Over here we've got some LF412C op amps. Right down here, down here, down here, and there's even two more down there. These are all the amplifier stages. So these are amplifier stages which then drive these transistors. The outputs from these transistors are fed back to the amplifiers, so they've got a feedback circuit into them. So it's controlling the gain, which is what I believe all these are for. I haven't actually reverse engineered in detail, but I believe these are switching these gain adjustments on the back. I think that's what they're doing. Then we've got some more over here as well. There's drivers. Like I said, we've got 12 channels, so we've got 12 of these down here and there as well. I'm quite sure about this area. Maybe it's related. I'm not quite sure. I haven't actually gone to that much detail. Did you end up converters? So the digital signal's coming in, outputs coming out. The outputs are going to these op amps. Now these, all these op amps, these are their 412s. These are dual op amps. So that's why there's only six of them for 12 outputs. Okay, because they're doing a pair of outputs on each one. Okay, so we've got six digital and analog converters. Must be dual ones, I'm guessing. I haven't actually looked at the specs for those. And then six op amps, which are dual op amps, so they're giving 12 channels. Okay, so these are obviously buffers, amplifiers. It's going through some more buffer amplifiers over here, going to the transistors, which are the final amplifiers, through the filtering to the outputs. Before this, we've got some line drivers. These here are line drivers, like transceivers, and so is this thing here. There's a microcontroller down here. I don't actually know what that is, but it's marked as 506U4B. And here, and here, you notice they're marked as R, R11, R12. These are 4.7K resistor networks. Also got a JTAG down here for the microcontroller. And you've got power supplies. You've got a minus 15 volt, a plus 15 volt, and another plus 15 volt. I'm not quite sure why there's two plus 15 volts. I haven't looked at that in detail. It could be they've got them cascaded, so you're getting 30 volts. I haven't looked at that. It's possible to do in that. That's one little trick you could do, maybe. This is using a 24 volt system, so it could easily be doing that. Right, that explains that part. And say so on the back, we've just got some discrete components here, resistors, capacitors, bits and pieces like that. Not much else to say there, but uh, I thought I'd just explain the topology of this thing in case you're interested, or if you've got one of these cards you're trying to fix, you're trying to figure out how it works. Op amps, transistor amplifiers. If anything goes wrong, check the filters are conducting. Should be, these should be passing straight through, right? Check for resistance on these filters. They should all be zero ohms. And you've got the transistors down here as well. Check all those if you've got a problem. That's the most likely place to go wrong. So just down here, as I said, you've got two more LF412Cs here. IC41, that's a voltage reference, believe it or not. And IC37 just here, that's a voltage regulator. It's a 78LO5 ACT or something like that, I think it was. But that's a voltage regulator in that package, and say voltage reference just here, which is quite interesting. The actual componentry doesn't seem to have any shorts, that kind of thing. You know, there's nothing obviously wrong there. I've tested individual components to make sure they look about the same. And so, like, all these op amps down here, there's LF412s, for example. They all measure exactly the same. I think all the componentry itself is okay. All right? There's nothing wrong there. There's no shortage tantalums. It's all good. No shorted caps anywhere. But I did find there's a little scratch over here. So I did find there's a little scratch just here across that track. So that might be a problem. And I can see it's cut through the solder mask there. So I'm going to fix that up for a start. But I did see some solder joints on these pins down here. This is the in, in connector this end. Those pins were looking a little bit dodgy. There's a couple which look a bit suspect. And there's a couple over here as well which look a bit suspect. So I thought I'd just sit down with the microscope here, stick it under that and solder them up. Just put some flux on it and renew all the solder on all these joints down here and all these pins down here. 
and then I'll fix up that little scratch. It's not really much of a video to sort of show you what I'm doing really. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad After her there ain't no coming back Wanna take a run at that I think she's feeling me, turn it up a few degrees My imagination of her body gets the best of me Oh god she's such a tease, bitten lips, bruised knees I'm addicted to her, need her touching me Cause she got a bad little waist And we tearing down this place Off the liquor that we chase, got some meat us to the face, baby, I don't need no space Coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make everything just fade away Cause she's like sex, drugs, cocaine, body so insane Jealous of the clothing that she wears up on that tight frame All game, no shame, baby, came here to play I feel like an addict cause she's sex, drugs, cocaine So I resold all these pins with some nice leaded solder, this is silver solder, this is quite a nice one, that's good quality solder. But I'm not liking the appearance of these joints, they're just not looking shiny, not looking as good. So these are probably lead free solder and there's obviously a mix of solder. So sometimes you can go over it, but in this case I'm not happy with it because of this goes into a rather expensive piece of machinery. So I'm going to suck that solder off and do it again with just this. These I think I can get away with, these, these ones here didn't look too bad, but these ones here were definitely looking worse. I'll use these solder and go and take the solder off those ones and redo those ones, I'm just not happy with them. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Thought I might as well show it, see as I'm doing it. Sounds like it's blocking. does sound like it's blocking, it's still sucking though, keep going. Sounds like my filter's need clean. That's it, filter needs cleaning. Yeah. I think I actually might need to replace the filter instead of cleaning it out then. Okay, so I'm blocked again. Carry on. I'm not worried about desoldering all of these in one go because it's got riveted onto the board. So, that's fine. Because it's riveted onto the board, I'm not worried about taking all the solder off all of these at the same time. It isn't going to go anywhere. Alright, that's what I was done. I'll resold them again. So that's what I was resolded again. I'm going to look at these afterwards I've cleaned it up. I'll, I'll see if I do those or not. 
Um, now I've got to sort this scratch out that's over here. And actually now I've got the microscope on it, it's not looking too bad at all. It may actually be nothing. It's through the solder mask though, so I think I will give it a scrape up. Just try and get that off and just put a bit of solder over the top of it. Just to make sure it's all good. It's only a small little scratch, but it could be a difference. Yeah, it's actually, I can see it in the copper as well. Now I've scratched it off there. Yeah, it's in the copper too, so... Yep, it's definitely worth doing. The fact that I can see it in the copper, not just on the solder mask, means it needed doing. So let's just do that. I'm currently recording on the microscope as well, so... Should be able to see it on the overlay or something. That's my tip needs cleaning. Just going to put some solder over top of it, and that'll be good enough. That'll do it. Just to reinforce it, that's all it needs. Right, let's clean this thing up. A bit of IPA. And this has got label stuff this in, I'm going to try and be careful not to get it all over the labels. It may matter. I want this to be spotless because the environment it's going to be in. Might even use cotton buds on this one just to finish it off. That's basically looking alright there now. So after much cleaning, that sort of flux off. I think I can probably give the ball back to him now and say it is what it is. I've done what I can. We sold all the joints, got it all nice. Um, and fix a little scratch over there, which seems to be the only issue I can actually find on the board, apart from some maybe slight dodgy solder joints. Um, the rest of it's looking good, so I'm going to leave it there. Hope you found it interesting. Catch you later.